Hi everyone, uh, this is Pedro again. Today I'm gonna do a demo of um, how to use this library here, Azure Storage Blob. So it's a Python package that's very useful to interact with the Azure account. For example, the other day I saw someone that wanted to for example, map all the folders, file name, and metadata, like when the file was created, the size of the file, the type of the blob, and save that into a tablet format that could be exported to a visualization tool like Power BI or Tableau, where they can do some statistics and visualization of what's inside that container. I'm just going to give you an example of what uh, I'm going to do here. So for example, um, I'm just opening an Excel file here, which is a, actually a CSV file. So it's going to be very easy to understand tablet format here. You can upload to a SQL server from your Azure storage. You're going to have like a table with uh, columns and rows with the data of those blobs. So it's a very simple one here. Uh, if you go to my storage account, so I have only one container and I have a subfolder with some PDFs here. And then I have one PDF in the root folder. So let's go to the code. Uh, I have this one here. So it's pretty much uh, what you need in terms of to connect to your storage account is your storage key, your stored URL, and your container name. And I'm getting from the config parser uh, file here. I'm going to show you because I'm going to delete this account after I finish the demo. So in this case, I create like uh, my environment variables here. Uh, I call it storage key. That's the key, which you can get from if you go to your start account and go to access keys you can get any one of those two here so in my case i get the first one go back to the code uh not this one this one uh and then you just read that you need file and then you just save those values into uh com variables here or I call it constant because it's all capital. And then with that, you can uh, initialize that storage account service where you authenticate with your URL and your credentials. So that's the object. So if you think about hierarchy, so you have your storage account, which is your service. The next level down is container. And then the next level down is your blob. So if you initialize a blob service client, so that's your service, your whole, uh, with that object, you have access to your whole storage account. And then you can then initialize a container client, which is solely gonna control that specific container. And you just need to pass the name of the container. Uh, in my case, I think it's called my container. And then with the storage account name, you can list all the blobs that's in that container. And you have this method called list blobs. And then that returns, um, I think it's a generator. Uh, and then you can iterate to that. And every item on that generator is a blob. And then with that blob, you can extract lots of metadata. So I just got a few, but these are all, all everything that's got like a, a block here, a small uh, blue with a angle bracket. You can get the list, the metadata, the name, and all those, these are all metadata or attributes of that object. And then what I'm doing here, I'm putting a default dictionary data structure and then I'm just calling every value of that dictionary a list. And then I can append that data. I'm just going to run this without saving the file. And then print. And then you can see 
in the screen how the data structure is. So, so it's pretty much a every key is the column of my table and every row of data is an item of that list. After that, it's I can easily save that into a data frame, use the pandas package. I then can, I can delete this because I'm not, I use this in the, the test to create that CSV here to show you guys. After that, I can then finally create a container client, not a blob client, which I call from my container client. And then I name how I'm gonna call it from the root. I'm gonna save like in a folder slash the name of the file. And finally, I upload that CSV to that blob. If you see my storage account, there is only subfolder file and some files here. But if I run the code now, all the code, it saves here. So 6.29 PM, let's do it again. Uh, 6.29.37, 6.29.47. Obviously, obviously you cannot do this only manually, but you can put that into a schedule. And a good option to do this is to put in an Azure function. You pretty much copy and paste that code inside this block here. If it's a function um, that has got a time trigger, I'm not going to teach this in this video, but I'll do another video that I will go into the detail on how to do a trigger function. I've done videos about how to do a HTTP trigger, but I'll do a time-based trigger like a Chrome tab uh, format. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions, please put it on the comments below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video and click the bell. Thanks for watching. See you next time.